there's nothing I've ever heard in the Department of Family Social Science that hasn't rung true or in line with my um, social justice perspective. So the idea that families are critical to our society resonates as true with me. The fact that we need to understand how families fit within the systems of our society and how some of those systems advantage some families and disadvantage others is very similar to the things that I've experienced in my own life, but in addition in working with students here at the University of Minnesota and understanding the complexities that we all bring, whether we're from rural Minnesota, urban Los Angeles, or East Africa, right? I mean, there's all of these things make sense. I think that a lot of the research that's being done within the department and the, what I can learn from my colleagues is very exciting. There is kind of that um, public health perspective, which is where I think I get this idea of the family as a system that can be healthy or can be in need of assistance or help. And so what I hear my colleagues saying and what I see the department doing rings really true to me and to my values as an instructor. I think that the transition between high school and college is a really, really wonderful time and difficult time in our lives. And I think that it's where students start to realize that there's all these conversations going on in the world and they're going to start paying attention to these conversations so that they can join them. And so really the framework or the lens that I like to bring to my teaching is everything we read, it's a continuation of a conversation. And we have to understand that so that we can join and add our voice. And I think that's really exciting for students. It's a little bit daunting of a task and it's a task that requires us to know some of the rhetorical structures that are used within different types of writing and different types of conversations so that we can join it and can communicate our ideas in a way that that really does truly communicate what our particular point of view wants to try to communicate. And so working with first year students when they're at the cusp of doing that, I mean some of them have been doing that in their high schools, but now when they're doing it kind of with an eye toward their career, their profession, their future, it's a really, really exciting time and it's extraordinarily satisfying to be on the the side of it, the, to have the perspective that I have where I get to witness it and shape and facilitate it at times as well. I think there's lots of benefits. I think the benefits are mutual. The students, I see those benefits so firsthand and I think it's that they, you know, they go into a, into a community organization and therefore they are there for you know between 20 and 30 hours in the course of a semester and very often they're welcomed into a community that they've had very limited or no exposure to in the past. So just by the nature of the fact that they're 18 years old and that they're from a particular geographical location, they haven't been interacting with the people who are in South Minneapolis or the people who are in on the east side of St. Paul. And so it's a really wonderful eye-opening experience of, oh, there are people who live in different family structures than I come from. There are people who have different life experiences, who value different things than perhaps I value or my family values, and it doesn't necessarily mean anything's better or worse, right? So they're seeing that and they're having that experience, but then they're also starting to analyze, well, what are some of these differences and how do the systems of our society impact these differences? So students are really able to take what we're talking about in class and the theory and apply it to what they're seeing. And that I think is a really hugely beneficial for their, their ability to take, to immediately start applying. Family social science um, in many ways is a wonderfully applied field. And so they're on day one able to take what they're reading about in class and some of these research articles that feel so kind of distant and apply them to what they're seeing. And that's a very exciting thing. In terms of the benefit for the organizations, a lot of the organizations depend on University of Minnesota students to come in and to bring time and energy and knowledge into their program. And so I've worked with a number of these organizations for a number of years and they schedule 
how they're going to run their program for this semester based on the University of Minnesota's schedule because they know we're going to have these students here working one-on-one -on -one with this particular group of students. We need that, we value that, and a lot of these organizations need, you know, it's all hands on deck. They need as many people as they can get, and I think University of Minnesota students, or at least the students who come through my class, are very open to new experiences. They're really, I mean, I'm always so impressed with them. They show up at their sites, they feel so vulnerable, they don't know anyone, they maybe just took public transportation for the first time. They're knocking on a door that's locked and they don't know how to get into the building, right? And so they're trying to navigate all that stuff, but they show up and they really put their full selves into their experience. If you are majoring in something because you want to go out into the community and work with families, having service learning courses which are going to engage you with community and in a very gentle way introduce you to the best practices for working with communities, taking service learning courses is going to be quite critical to your undergraduate education.